Now, Help for Heroes, is, I've got to say it's one of my favourite charities. It's, it's the leading for, uh, charity for armed forces in the UK, but with the cost of living crisis, ongoing personal battles, more and more veterans are suffering mm -hmm. and they need more help. Well, here to discuss the current situation is Head of Clinical and Medical Services for Help for Heroes, Carol Betteridge, OBE. Good morning, Good Carol. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. You're very, very welcome. What is the situation for veterans in this country now? Are they being very well looked after? I think they really dropped off um, the highlight, really, dropped off the headlines. Mm. But they're still fighting personal battles. They're fighting a war. Um, you know, that lots of them have had psychological and physical injuries, pain, discomfort, mm. sleeplessness. Um, and they become isolated and lonely. And then if you put the cost of living on top of that, it really compounds mm. their suffering. And, of course, I think for some of these men and women, we shouldn't forget a lot of service women, Absolutely. when they come out of the military, which is like a big family, mm. which, which, so it's a, a self-help protection organisation, and then they're on their own, and they may add to that they've got post-traumatic stress, they may have lost a limb, Life is tough. It's really tough. Uh, and that's what they miss. They miss that camaraderie, which, yeah. you know, we provide, as well as helping them with counselling for their mental illnesses mm. and also their physical illnesses, helping them find the right care and the right support. Because we want everybody in the armed forces community to live well when they leave. Mm. Well, yeah, I think it just, it was just so bad to right. say you were formed, of, I think, 2007. That's right. And there was a great blaze of publicity Absolutely. when you were launched. Absolutely. But is it hard now to get yourself heard? Yes, it is, because obviously the cost of living crisis and all the other things that are going on in the world, really, I think the veterans have been forgotten and their families, of course, which is really important. I was, all I was going to say is on a day like today when we're seeing British citizens being rescued from Sudan, it's a reminder of what an important job our forces do uh, around the world, even when we're not in actual combat war at any particular given time. They're still working hard behind the scenes. Absolutely. You know, I think the armed forces are as busy as they've ever been with the mm. things that are going on. And we see that nearly four um, personnel a day leave the armed forces because of a medical discharge, mm. because of injury or illness. So we have to support them as well. Um, we've seen an increase in requests for our support across mm. the years. At the same time, why you're here, uh, Carrie, is because the money isn't coming in the way it used to. That's Not right. Much. I mean, since th 2014, our income has dropped by 50%, and yet the request for support has increased. So we really need the general public to understand that the veterans and their families are still fighting that war, and we want to continue to deliver that promise to support them for the rest of their lives. I guess people would say, well... It's not the public's job to look after people who've been serving us. It's the government's job. If there's any way they should be spending their hard-earned taxpayers' money, it should be on looking after our, our forces. What would you say to that? I mean, that's part of our work. Yeah. So we lobby the government. We um, have policies that we put to them to ask them for support for mobility, for hearing, for adapting houses, all the things that the veterans need, as well as providing them themselves. And statutory services in the NHS, we want to augment that. We don't want to take that over. So we have to continue to, yeah. to raise the profile of it's, veterans. It's so sad. On a train, a few, two weeks running, I was on a train, and two weeks running, a, a, a chap was on, walking through the train. He was clearly in difficulty. And he told us he was a so former soldier, he'd served in Afghanistan, mm. I've got no money, mm. um, I have a problem with drink and substance abuse, can somebody... And people gave him a lot of money, mm. because it was the moment he said he would have been in the, in the military. Yes. It was quite extraordinary, yes. actually. It was quite moving. Yeah. So I think that's why we've done this, to, to remind people that veterans that were injured in Afghanistan, Iraq, and conflicts way before that, Northern Ireland, you know, if they were injured or ill or suffered psychologically, they're still suffering today. Mm -hmm. So we need to remember them. We need to remind people that they still need that support. Because we often think, don't we, about veterans. We think Armistice Day. We think yes. uh, the old yes. boys and old, yeah. uh, older ladies yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the Cenotaph. Uh, but actually, there's mm. thousands of soldiers and servicemen and women who suffered all sorts of injuries in Afghanistan, Iraq. I mean, we've supported over 28,000. Really? But there's more out there. There's many more out there. And the other thing that we want to do with this campaign is remind people that if they are suffering, mm. please come forward, please look at our website, please just talk to somebody and ask for support because we will be there for you. Mm. But that's, that's got to be the irony, isn't it? You've got the toughest people in the country. And then it's very difficult for those kind of characters often to then ac admit their vulnerability. Yeah, it's really hard. They're very independent people. They don't want to ask for help. So... 
And, and we have people that come 10 or 12 years after they were, were in a conflict that are now asking for help because they're still suffering, mm. but they've only just got the courage to ask. So we and, must and continue to do that. Often, of course, these mental problems they suffer can cause family breakdown. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's that, um, you know, it, they'll be taking perhaps medication. They then fall out with their family. And because of that, they might lose a job and then they're in mm. debt and become homeless. So it's, it's an ongoing issue for them um, every single day. It's Carol, how, continued battle. how bad is it right now for Help for Heroes as a charity? Is it as bad as it's ever been? Yes, I think it is because, as I said, you know, the income has dropped because mm. people are not seeing... Um, gladly not seeing casualties coming back from a war zone. So, you know, veterans and their families are not in their mind's eye. There's so much else mm -hmm. going on. So we need to continue to just remind them through these campaigns that please help us to support. I know it's really difficult for everybody, mm. but please help us because without your support, we can't help those veterans. How did you get into this camp? What's your background? So I was in uh, the Navy as a nursing officer for 26 years. Were you really? And I was the CEO of the hospital in Bastion in Afghanistan. Right. So I treated um, a lot of the casualties that came through. You must have seen and some desperate things. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that when those people left the armed forces, they still got some support. It's, it's unfinished business mm. for me. Yeah, and of course we talk about the number of people who died in Afghanistan, but the number of young men and women who came back with life-changing injuries. And that's it, it's life-changing, and that's life-changing for forever. Yeah. It do, you know, they don't get better. So we need to just help them as best we can to live well by counselling, by help with their physical injuries, by helping them to re-engage with their community mm. so they're not so isolated. Mm. And that means that then they can, as I say, live life. And we've, we've got a veterans minister now, of course. Uh, yes, Johnny, we have. yes, Johnny, Johnny Mercer. Mercer. Johnny Mercer. Yeah. Has that made a difference? Yes, I think he's helping us highlight the issues that veterans have. he's ex-military. He is, he is his yeah. So he will help us highlight those issues and hopefully, as we've talked about, the policy of, mm. of making things more available, like the Mobility Fund for Veterans, and that needs to go in the right places. Are you, are you guys struggling, as a lot of charities are, with the fact that people don't have cash anymore? So when you're out with a bucket... I do. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> and your checkbook. You take and a check. And checkbook. Um, is that sometimes at events when you would have charity workers with a bucket, what? nobody ever has not got any money. I imagine direct debits you, are the things that you guys rely we've on. We've mostly got cards machines now. Oh, have you? Oh, good yeah, for you. Yeah, we've got smart on that. So we yeah. make sure that people are able to give however they can. Yeah. But it's, actually, it's not just the money. It's also volunteering. So helping us in the community. What sort of things do you want people to do as volunteers? So things like we've got um, a Tesco collection. Uh, on the 28th of June. So, you know, we want to make sure that people volunteer for that and come out and support veterans in their community. And actually, it's not the 28th, it's the, tw it's the 18th. But, <laughs> right. Yeah, so volunteer. Um, there's, we're setting up things like coffee mornings and other events where you can come along and just volunteer, chat to a veteran, you know, get to know them and encourage them to be part of the community. Mm. So again. look at your website, Help for Heroes Absolutely. website, where all Please the information will be. And what is the website? Just remind us. www.helpforheroes.org.uk Right. Uh, and there's also a new um, address for... The Veterans War, you can find it on there. Brilliant. Right. But both asking for support from the general public, asking for support for veterans, but also, importantly, asking the veterans yeah. to Do you know, I said, I just had a thought, that if our great Queen was still with us, she'd be lapping up every word of this, because, of course, she was a huge supporter mm. of military she was. charities, wasn't she? She was. And yes. we thank all of our service people we for do. looking after us and keeping us safe. They're good at that. And we Carol thank, Bestridge. And we thank people like Carol OBA for, for looking after them, for doing their job. That's Help thank for you. Heroes. So they need your support, they need your money, they also need you to volunteer.